STS-123 was a space shuttle mission to the International Space Station ISS, which was flown by Space Shuttle Endeavour. STS-123 was the 1J, AISS assembly mission. The original launch target date was 14 February 2008 but after the delay of STS-122, the shuttle was launched on of March 2008. It was the 25th shuttle mission to visit the ISS, and delivered the first module of the Japanese Laboratory, Japanese Experiment Module Kibo, and the Canadian Special Purpose Dexterous Manipulator SPDM, Dextra Robotics System to the station. The mission duration was 15 days and 18 hours, and it was the first mission to fully utilize the station to shuttle power transfer system SSPTS, allowing space station power to augment the shuttle power systems. The mission set a record for a shuttle's longest stay at the ISS. Topic. Topic. Mission payloads STS-123 delivered the pressurized section of the Japanese Experiment Logistics Module LPS, as well as the Special Purpose Dexterous Manipulator SPDM, to the International Space Station. The SPDM was delivered disassembled on a Spacelab pallet SLP and assembled during three spacewalks once it was at the station. <laughs> <laughs> Shuttle processing In August 2007, STS-123 crew members participated in crew equipment interface tests for the ELM-PS at Kennedy Space Center. Processing continued on schedule for Endeavour's launch in early 2008. NASA engineers applied the same eco-sensor modifications used on STS-122's external tank, to Endeavour's tank. In January, a HEPA filter contamination issue was discovered, but was resolved and with no impact to the mission. On the 11th of February 2008, Endeavour was rolled over to the vehicle assembly building in preparation for mating with the external tank and solid rocket boosters. On 13 February 2008, Endeavour was successfully mated with its external tank and solid rocket boosters, and was rolled out to launch pad 39A in the early hours of 18 February 2008, for its planned launch on of March 2008. The terminal countdown demonstration test, a full-dress rehearsal for launch with the crew, took place 23-25 February 2008. <laughs> <laughs> Mission background The mission marked Longest shuttle mission to the ISS to date 153rd NASA manned space flight 122nd space shuttle flight since STS-1 97th post-Challenger mission 9th post-Columbia mission 30th night launch 16th KSC shuttle night landing, 22nd shuttle night landing overall 21st launch of Endeavour Second mission of Endeavour since return to flight. Topic. Mission timeline Flight days are based on the days as experienced by the astronauts, who are generally in a day and night pattern that is not equal to that of the launch site. The first flight day is the day of launch for the astronauts. 
That day started at the launch site on the 10th of March 2008 local time with the actual launch in the early hours of the 11th and the astronauts going to bed several hours after launch. The 10th of March 2008 is called flight day 1 by NASA even though the actual mission launched on the 11th of March. Topic the 11th of March flight day 1 launch Endeavour launched on time at 2 hours 28 minutes and 14 seconds Eastern Daylight Saving Time 6 hours 28 minutes and 14 seconds Coordinated Universal Time early into the night of the 11th of March 2008, from Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. The flash evaporator system switched from its primary controller to the backup controller during launch, and instrumentation for a few left side control thrusters was lost due to a card failure. These anomalies were not expected to affect the mission. Topic: The 12th of March, flight day 2. The shuttle closed in on the space station. The crew used a 50 feet 15 meters laser tipped boom to inspect its wings and nose for any sign of launch damage. The inspection has been standard procedure ever since the 2003 Columbia accident. Flight director Mike Moses said a quick look at the images the astronauts beamed down to Earth revealed no signs of trouble. In addition to performing the inspection, the astronauts also prepared their spacesuits for the five planned spacewalks and gathered the tools they would need for the docking. Topic: The 13th of March, flight day 3. Endeavour's commander, Dominic Gorey, guided the shuttle through a 360-degree backflip, known as the Rendezvous Pitch Maneuver, to allow for full photographic surveillance of the thermal tiles on the space shuttle's belly before docking with the space station. Docking occurred at 3.49 Coordinated Universal Time and the hatches between the two spacecraft were opened at 5.36 Coordinated Universal Time on. After docking the pallet carrying Dextra was moved to the payload ORU accommodation POA of the Mobile Base Station MBS by Canadarm2. Topic: The 14th of March, flight day 4. Spacewalkers Richard Linehan and Garrett Reisman worked on installing Dextra. However, the Spacelab pallet carrying the SPDM would not power up. Engineers on the ground tried a software patch, though later suspected a design flaw in Dexter's temporary power cable caused the issue. Crew members on board Endeavour used a robotic arm to remove the Japanese logistics module, pressurized section JLP, from Endeavour's cargo bay and attach it to the space station. The JLP was attached to its interim location on the Harmony module at 8.06 Coordinated Universal Time. The 15th of March Flight Day 5 The crew spent time outfitting the Japanese logistics module, transferring supplies and equipment into it from Space Shuttle Endeavour. The station's arm operators grappled the Canadian-built Dextra Friday at 1.59 Coordinated Universal Time. Canadarm2 successfully powered up Dextra 11 minutes later. Mission specialists Rick Linehan and Mike Foreman spent the night in the station's Quest airlock in preparation for the second spacewalk of the mission. Topic: The 16th of March, Flight Day 6. 
Dextra was put together today during the second spacewalk of STS-123. Mission specialists Richard Linehan and Mike Foreman completed their 7-hour, 8-minute orbital stroll Sunday at 6:57 coordinated universal time. The spacewalkers encountered some difficulty removing two bolts that secured the robot arm during transport and had to resort to using a pry bar to remove them. Throughout the day, the station and shuttle crew members continued outfitting the Japanese logistics module, pressurized section. Topic: The 17th of March, flight day 7. The crews continued outfitting the Japanese logistics module pressurized section, transferring supplies and equipment into it from Endeavour, as well as configuring racks inside the module. The crews tested the brakes in the robotic system's arms. One of the joints in the arm seemed to be operating right on the required margin. Engineers expressed confidence that this issue would be resolved. Rick Linehan and Robert Benkin ended their day by camping out in the station's quest airlock topic the 18th of march flight day 8 linehan and benkin began the third eva at 2251 coordinated universal time the excursion lasted 6 hours and 53 minutes Linehan and Benkin installed a spare parts platform, cameras, and tool handling assembly for Dextra. Among other tasks, they also checked out and calibrated Dexter's end effector and attached critical spare parts to an external stowage platform. They were unable to attach a materials science experiment to the Columbus module due to issues with the attachment fitting, but may have another opportunity later in the mission. Topic: The 19th of March, flight day 9. In a day highlighted by robotics activity, Dextra was attached to a power and data grapple fixture located on the U.S. laboratory Destiny. Canadarm2 grabbed the pallet that secured Dextra during its journey to the orbital outpost and returned the pallet to Space Shuttle Endeavour's payload bay for the trip back to Earth. The station and shuttle crews also prepared hardware to be used in a shuttle tile repair test on the next spacewalk, and got some much needed off-duty time. The 20th of March, Flight Day 10 The crews of Space Shuttle Endeavour and the International Space Station got some off-duty time at the beginning of their tenth day in orbit. They also spoke to Japanese Prime Minister Yasuo Fukuda and participated in interviews with U.S. media. The astronauts spent the remainder of their day configuring tools for the 4th STS-123 spacewalk and reviewing spacewalk procedures. Before going to sleep, mission specialists Robert L. Benkin and Mike Foreman entered the station's quest airlock for the standard camp out. Topic: The 21st of March, Flight Day 11. Mission specialists Robert L. Benkin and Mike Foreman completed the 4th STS-123 spacewalk at 4.28 Coordinated Universal Time, spending 6 hours and 24 minutes on the excursion. The two shuttle crew members replaced a failed remote power control module—essentially a circuit breaker—on the station's truss. However, there were difficulties removing a power connector from the Z1 truss. 
With mission specialist Rick Linehan coordinating their activities from inside the orbiting complex, the spacewalkers also tested a repair method for damaged heat-resistant tiles on the space shuttle. This technique used a cock gun-like tool named the Tile Repair Ablator Dispenser to dispense a material called Shuttle Tile ABLATOR-54 into purposely damaged heat shield tiles. The sample tiles will be returned to Earth to undergo extensive testing on the ground. Topic. The 22nd of March, Flight Day 12. The STS-123 crew performed the final inspection of Space Shuttle Endeavour's heat shield using the shuttle's robot arm and the Orbiter Boom Sensor System (OBSS). Gorey, Johnson, and Doy surveyed the orbiter's wings and nose cap to ensure that no damage had occurred to the tiles that protect Endeavour from the heat of re-entry. The crews spent the remainder of their day configuring tools and reviewing procedures for the flight's final spacewalk. This included the standard, Camp Out, in the station's Quest airlock for Benkin and Foreman. Topic: The 23rd of March, Flight Day 13. Michael Foreman and Robert Benkin completed their six-hour EVA at 2:36 UTC, attaching a 50 feet (15 meters) inspection pole to the International Space Station and completing other chores. Foreman and Benkin hooked an extra long power cord to the inspection pole, to keep its lasers and cameras warm for the next two months, then secured the boom to the outside of the space station. After finishing that task, Foreman inspected a jammed rotating joint that has restricted the use of a set of solar wings for months. NASA hopes to have a plan for dealing with the jammed joint by the end of the month, Space Station Flight Director Dana Weigel said. The 24th of March, Flight Day 14 The crews of Space Shuttle Endeavour and the International Space Station completed their last full day together. Much of the astronauts' morning was off-duty time. Afterward, the crews wrapped up transfers of equipment and supplies between Endeavour and the station, and out the tools needed for undocking and subsequent activities. The STS-123 and Expedition 16 crews also held a joint crew news conference, answering questions from members of the media on Earth. Topic: The 25th of March, Flight Day 15. The hatches between Endeavour and the International Space Station closed around 21:49 Coordinated Universal Time, ending a 12-day stay at the ISS, with a scheduled undocking of 23:57 Coordinated Universal Time. Because of problems with a command sent to solar arrays in the ISS, the undocking was delayed 28 minutes and occurred at 025 Coordinated Universal Time. Topic: The 26th of March, Flight Day 16. The crew of Space Shuttle Endeavour spent Tuesday getting ready for its journey home and the end of the STS-123 mission. Early in their day, the crew members performed a test of the thrusters that will be used to position the orbiter for re-entry and the control surfaces for its flight through the atmosphere. The STS-123 astronauts also set up the recumbent seat for mission specialist Leopold Ahartz, who joined the crew of Endeavour on the International Space Station. 
The recumbent seat is a special seat designed to reduce the stress of gravity on those who have spent long periods of time in the weightless environment of space. Topic: The 27th of March, flight day 17, landing. Flight controllers gave a no-go on de-orbit for the first landing opportunity at 2305 Coordinated Universal Time, 1905 Eastern Daylight Saving Time, due to unfavorable weather conditions at the shuttle landing facility at Kennedy Space Center. Weather conditions were acceptable for the second landing opportunity, planned for 039 Coordinated Universal Time, the 27th of March 2008. 39 Eastern Daylight Saving Time the 26th of March 2008 The landing occurred at the shuttle landing facility and was the 16th night landing of the space shuttle at KSC 22nd shuttle night landing overall Coincidentally this mission also began with a night launch the second landing opportunity was a complete success with main gear touchdown occurring at 20 hours 39 minutes and 8 seconds Eastern Daylight Saving Time 0 hours 39 minutes and 8 seconds Coordinated Universal Time the 27th of March 2008, nose gear touchdown at 20 hours 39 minutes and 17 seconds Eastern Daylight Saving Time 0 hours 39 minutes and 17 15 seconds coordinated universal time the 27th of March 2008 and wheels stop at 20 hours 40 minutes and 41 seconds Eastern Daylight Saving Time 0 hours 40 minutes and 41 seconds coordinated universal time the 27th of March 2008 completing the STS 123 cruise 16 days 14 hours 12 minutes 27 seconds space voyage the exhaust produced by the hydrazine gas generator Apis on either side of Endeavour's tail fin created concern among some observers that something was amiss, as it appeared more pronounced than usual in NASA's visual light cameras. However, this exhaust is normal and expected. The three hydrazine gas generator APIS are activated five minutes before the deorbit burn and are running for five minutes after wheels stop. The mono-propellant hydrazine changes phase due to a catalyst and reaches 1,700 degrees Fahrenheit 927 degrees Celsius. The hydraulic power is needed for the shuttle's rudder, speed brake, elevens, body flap and landing gear during descent, and for the main engine nozzles gimbling during ascent. Each of the solid rocket boosters have two similar hydrazine gas generators for their nozzle gimbling. Topic: <laughs> Extravehicular activity. Five spacewalks took place during the flight. The cumulative time in extravehicular activity during the mission was 33 hours and 28 minutes. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Wake-up calls. NASA began a tradition of playing music to astronauts during the Gemini program, which was first used to wake up a flight crew during Apollo 15. Each track is specially chosen, often by their families, and usually has a special meaning to an individual member of the crew, or is applicable to their daily activities. Contingency mission STS-324 was the designation given to the Contingency Shuttle Crew Support Mission which would have been launched in the event Space Shuttle Endeavour became disabled during STS-123. It would have been a modified version of the STS-124 mission and would have involved the launch date being brought forward. 
The crew for this mission would have been a four-person subset of the full STS-124 crew. <laughs> <laughs> Media <laughs>